don't let it bother you when things go wrong. If you come to some and some good luck will come along. Don't let it bother you if now and then you may stumble, never crumble from someone who says a frowny smile upside down. So turn the frown upside down and smile and sing. Ooh, la 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 la. Mine has housemaid's knee. Don't be discouraged, Egbert. I think you show distinct tendencies towards Terpsichorean excellence. You think so, really? Well, you know, as a matter of fact, my inner soul has always yearned to express itself in the dance. Hmm. If you were I, what would you do? Stick to law. <laughs> Carson, la addition, s'il vous plaît. Spoken like a real native. You recognize it? No. Well, voilà, monsieur. What? Oh, oh, yes. Oh, my guy, this is an expensive place here. Guy, in the excitement of changing my clothes on that train, I must have left my wallet in that other suit. Egbert, what would you do without me? <laughs> oh, I mean to say. <laughs> I've been in America for the past several months with my friend here. We're just passing through Paris on our way to London. We're taking the boat tomorrow. I am the proprietor. What can I do for you? Well, I'm afraid we'll have to mail you the amount of the check. Well, monsieur, I do not know you. Well, this gentleman's father is Sir Frederick Fitzgerald, the distinguished London attorney. Yes, and I'm a lawyer too. You, monsieur? <laughs> well, my friend here is Guy Holden, the American dancer, musical comedy and whatnot. Certainly you've heard of Holden. Oh, yes. I've heard of Guy Holden. But, monsieur, have you any means of identification? Well, see, we, uh... Left it in the other suit. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, <laughs> I... Uh, I, I have it. I have it. Look here, old chap. If my friend dances like Guy Holden, that proves he is Guy Holden, doesn't it? Quod erat demonstrant. Go ahead, Guy. Dash them off a bit of a minuet or a polka or a scallop or something. Oh, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm on my vacation. I'm not going to do any dancing. I heard they make you wash dishes in Paris. There you are. That means nothing. Then you try it. Suppose you do it over there. With all these people around? Well, if you are a guy, hold on. People should not disturb you. No. Yes, no you you should should it 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 French yeah. cooking must make the dishes very difficult to wash.
is it? What's the matter? What do you uh, what do you want? Mr. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mr. Pinky Fitzgerald? Yes. Pinky. Oh, that's the first time I've heard that one. It must be from father. He's always called me Pinky, ever since I was a golden-haired little tot paddling about the ancestral home in pale pink pajamas. Yeah, uh, what do you want? Oh, here, uh, tip that boy. Yeah. Read that boy. I'm right, all right. involved here, guy, please. Thank you, Captain. Right, you are. Right. Right. Yes, it's from your father. He says, uh, leaving for Scotland. Stop. Take charge of office in my absence. Stop. Good. Father's placing everything in my hands. <laughs> but I haven't finished yet. He also says, but don't do anything. Just sit. Let me see that. <laughs> Why, Pinky, evidently you've been in charge of the office before. Excuse me, sir. Can you help me in Section D, sir? What is it? I can't do a thing with her, sir. Who? The lady in Section D, sir. She's an American, and you know how these Americans are, sir. When you're finished, look after that gentleman. Yes, yeah, sir. Will you gentlemen come with me, please? Excuse me, madam. I'm the chief inspector. Anything I can do for you? You most certainly can. This man wants to mess up my trunk after I've carefully packed all the lovely things I bought in Paris. I'm very sorry, madam, but we have to inspect all luggage for dutiable merchandise. Oh. Now, madam, how much did you pay for this? That? Oh, now, how much did I pay for it? I know I paid an awful lot. Oh, but I shouldn't be telling you that, should I? <laughs> Where did you buy it? Where did I buy it? Oh, now, let me see. What was the name of that town? Paris? Paris? No, no, it wasn't Paris. Lions? No, no, it wasn't lions. But you're getting warmer. Niece. Niece? Yes, that's who I'm waiting for. What? Yes, my niece Mimi. I sent her a cable to London and told her to meet me here. Well, where is she? I'm sure I don't know, madam. This is the only other place she might be, miss. Oh, there she is. Thank you very much. Poor Kim. Mimi, dear. How are you? Oh, you look perfectly marvelous. Yes, don't I? Oh, this is my niece, Mimi. You know, I told you about her. The poor little thing has had her life all mixed up. But I've come over expressly to straighten it all out for her. Madam, we would appreciate it if you'd straighten this matter out first. Well, what is it you want me to do? Well, come with me, and we'll make a declaration of all your purchases. Dear, everything's so topsy-turvy. Mimi, dear, will you put those things in while I lock this trunk? Please? Yes, please. And um, would you be good enough to hold this for me? Thank you. Did you have a nice trip? Oh, I had a marvelous trip, and I do adore Paris. It's so much like Chicago that I enjoyed every minute of it. It's such a relief when you're traveling to feel that you've never really left home at all. I shouldn't be long, dear. Come along, then. Can I be of any assistance? Why, well, yes, my, my aunt is in the inspector's office. Would you call her for me? Oh, yes, indeed. Thank you. With, with pleasure. You're an American, aren't you? Oh, yes. So am I. So is my aunt. You know, the one you were going to call for me? Oh, yes. Um, is there anything special you want me to tell her? Well, uh, you might tell her that my uh, dress is caught. Oh, your dress is caught. My, my. Locked. Yes. And you want me to call your aunt? Yes. You know, a third party might spoil this. Porter! Oh, Porter! Oh, Porter! Porter, there's no reason why I can't handle this myself. You know, I pulled a cat out of a well once when I was a boy. Now, let me see. Oh. 
Maybe, maybe I should have called your aunt. Well. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. Uh, please take this. Oh, please forgive me. I'm living in London. Where can I return this to you? Oh, I I'm stopping in London, too. Uh, may I save you the trouble and call for it? I'd rather you wouldn't. Oh. Well, um, here's my address. I'll be waiting to hear from you. You didn't say goodbye. No, I didn't. Well, that's wonderful. That means I'll see you again. I want to know how every cent is spent. Oh, here you are, Hortense. I just had the most embarrassing experience. A man tore my dress off. My goodness. Anyone we know? Hortense. Here you are, madam. Oh, poor me. And I do adore fruit baskets. Oh, isn't he generous? But you shouldn't have been so extravagant. After all, we've just met, you know. <laughs> Not bad, not bad at all. Have you time for an encore? Sorry, Governor, my time's too valuable. Oh, so sorry. Uh, don't you want to ask me who sent that, sir? Oh, I see, the play spirit. All right, tell me, who sent it? The young lady gave me three shillings, sir, and asked me not to tell. Oh, oh, yes, <laughs> I see, and, and asked me not to tell, yeah. <laughs> Hi? Yeah? Package for you. Yeah. Oh, that's my raincoat. <laughs> that must be her handwriting. <laughs> oh, let me see it. I used to study handwriting. Yeah. Oh, it's very neat. Yes. The O's and the A's are open. That means extravagance. Oh, and look at the way she crosses her T's. That denotes temper. Yes. Mm, she makes little circles instead of dots. Oh, that's dreadful. It's an unfailing sign of vanity. Yes. Of course, don't let me discourage you. I... Guy, what is the matter with you? You seem to be under the, some sort of a spell or something. I am, and for the first time in my life. Oh. What are you looking for? Well, where's the note? Oh, no note. No note? No note. Well, did you talk to the messenger? I certainly did. And he said that she asked him not to tell where it came from. I wonder if she resented my tearing her skirt. Well, I wouldn't be at all surprised. That's the usual reaction. What'd you do that for? Oh, she couldn't move. Oh, sounds a very unsporting of you, Guy, really. Well, you don't understand. You see, she... It was an accident. And usually is, yeah. What's her name? I don't know. Well, where'd she live? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> My, what an interesting romance. I was in hopes that she'd send some note of thanks with his raincoat along with her address. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, without having the prophetic powers of a seventh son, I would hazard that she doesn't want to see you anymore. <laughs> well, I'm going to rush off to the office. What are you going to do, Guy? Start looking for her. I'll find that girl Egbert if it takes me from now on. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Well, it shouldn't be difficult. After all, there are only three million women in London. It's just like looking for a needle in a haystack, searching for a moonbeam in the blue. Still, I've got to find you. It's just like looking for a raindrop in the ocean, searching for a dewdrop in the dew. Still, I've got to find you. I'll roam the town in hopes that we'll meet. Look at each face I pass on the street. For sometimes I hear the beat of your feet But it's just imagination Oh, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack Still I'll follow every little clue 
Cause I've got to find you It's just like looking for a needle in a haystack Searching for a moonbeam in the moon Still I've got to find you It's just like looking for a raindrop in the ocean Searching for a dewdrop in the dew Still I've got to find you In hopes that we'll meet Look at each face I pass on the street Sometimes I hear The beat of your feet But it's just imagination Though it's like Looking for a needle in a haystack Still I'll follow every little clue Cause I've got to find you
Isn't it peaceful here? Would you mind moving your car, or don't you want it anymore? Yes, Guy, it is peaceful, isn't it? What a shame, two perfectly beautiful cars, and in a moment the air will be full of fenders. Wait, uh, would you mind hitting it just about there? That cigarette lighter never did work anyway. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. Porter! Porter! Can't do it. I guess I'm too economical. Now, can I offer you something? Uh, frosted chocolate, Cointreau, Benedictine, marriage? Oh, what was that last? Benedictine. No. After that. Oh, marriage. Do you always propose marriage as casually as that? Oh, there's nothing casual about it. I've given it a lot of sincere thought. As a matter of fact, I've lost sleep over it. Do you realize that I've spent the last two weeks looking for you? Oh, didn't you get your coat all right? Yes, but I missed something. Some little note telling me where I could get in touch with you. You know, I've got to know something about you. Whether you're happy, what flowers you like, your favorite books, music. Look, when do I see you again? Won't you please tell me where I can get in touch with you? You can't. I'm staying with friends, old friends. And you'd be much too upsetting. I would know what you were going to do next. Well, if you won't give me your phone number, here's mine. Just wasting paper. Ah, I thought you were economical. That's better. May I go now? All right. But you will try and call me tomorrow, won't you? I'll be waiting. I'll be waiting every day. And then I'll, I'll rest up at night so I can wait some more. I say, old chap, do you mind letting us through here? Oh, rather. Right you are. Cheerio. Right you are, sorry. Right. I bought this in the sporting goods store. <laughs> Wait! You didn't tell me your name! Mimi! Mimi? Mimi. Thank you very much. Oh, Hortense, it's hopeless. I don't know why we're here. Oh, darling, Egbert's a very old friend of mine. Of course, he doesn't know much about law. It's his father who's the brains. You know, all of his family spent their entire lives at the bar. Oh, dear Egbert. He was nearly my third husband. He would have been, too. But he suddenly left for India on an elephant hunt. I wonder why he preferred to hunt elephants when he could have married me. I'm sorry, Mrs. Ditherwell. Mr. Fitzgerald doesn't seem to recall your name. Why, what do you mean he doesn't? Oh, of course. I'd be married again. He wouldn't know me as Ditherwell. That was my third husband, my last. Now, let me see. What name did Egbert know me by? Hortense, darling. I didn't marry in 1929 or 30. That was the year of the crash, and men didn't know whether they had money or not. Well, well, well I'll tell you just what you say. You say, uh, peanuts. Do you know? Peanuts? Yes. You know, the association of ideas. Peanuts? Elephant. Elephant hunt? Me. I'll tell him peanuts, madam. Yes. <laughs> mm <laughs> 
Yes, yes, yes. She said to say peanuts. Oh, did she? Well, tell her I don't want any. She also mentioned something about India, elephant hunting. Well, that makes it peanuts, India, elephant hunt. That doesn't make sense. Hortet? Oh, no. No, it couldn't be. Tell her I'm not here. Tell her I'm in conference. Tell her I'm out of town. Hey, but oh. darling. Oh, darling. Oh, you mustn't mind him. He's so impetuous. You do look wonderful. And you look just the same. The same sweet smile and the same dear little eyes. I want you to meet my niece, Mrs. Glossop. Mrs. Glossop? Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Glossop? How do you do, Mr. Fitzgerald? Glad to know you. <laughs> thank you. Well, <laughs> yes. Uh, sit down, sit down. Yes, sit down. thank you. I'm here professionally, Egbert. Oh. This poor little thing is married, unhappily married. Now, isn't that criminal? Well, it's no crime to be married. It just shows a weakness on the part of men that women take advantage of. <laughs> oh, Egbert, are you proposing to me again? <laughs> no, no, no. Mrs. Glossop, I presume, has a problem? Yes, I have. But there's so many things in connection with it that I hardly know where to begin. Oh, well? Sit down, Egbert. I'll tell him all about it. You see, she's been married two years, and she's scarcely ever seen her husband. In fact, she never hears from him unless he wants some of her money. I met him at school. He was one of my instructors. Yes, he's a geometrist. Oh, a geometrist. No, darling, a geologist. Oh, a geologist. Well, all right, a geologist. What difference does it make us all the same? You know, rocks and things. Oh, oh, he threw them. No, he digs them. He digs them. Well, uh, <clears throat> have you uh, asked your husband for a divorce? Repeatedly, but he refuses to even discuss it with me. Uh -huh. Well, of course, you understand that obtaining a divorce in England is a very difficult thing, unless the husband agrees to grant it. Oh, Egbert, I didn't know you liked dolls. <laughs> he always had the mother instinct. Uh, <clears throat> uh, ladies, as your legal advisor, I would suggest that we, uh, we resort to uh, 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 <clears throat> thingamajig. Fragrant delicto. Why? Oh, yes, well, yes, 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 of course. You know, I had one of my second divorce. Oh, mm. mm -hmm, yeah. Of course, uh, Mrs. Glossop, uh, the details are very simple. A seaside hotel and... Uh, Mr. Fitzgerald, I'll do anything you say and leave the further details to the two of you. Oh, I, I think really it would be much better for me if you remained. No, no, run along, dear. <laughs> I'll fix everything. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald, and I, I feel very comfortable in your hands. Oh, really? Well, <laughs> Mrs. Glossop, I'll work my brain to the bone for you. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> now, let's get right down to business. Oh, oh, Egbert. <laughs> I mean the hotel. Oh. Now, I know a very nice one just opening at Brightburn. It's the Hotel Bella Vista. Oh, Bella Vista, and so easy to remember. I had a cook named Bella once, or was it a masseuse? Well, anyway, I'll have my niece drive down, and she'll meet you there tomorrow at the Hotel Maryland. No, 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 no that wasn't it, was it? But it had something to do with the girl's name. Perhaps you better take this with you. Oh, the Bella Vista. Of course. That's what I said in the first place, isn't it? Oh, oh goodbye, Egbert. You know, divorces make me so sentimental. Don't you wish it was ours? Yes, miss. I understand, miss. Who was it? A man or woman? A lady, sir. D did she give you a message? Yes, sir. Well, what is it? What is it? Tell me. It's no use getting excited, sir. It was the wrong number. Get everything ready. Hurry, hurry. I'm leaving for the seashore immediately. What's the matter? Did another woman propose to you? Uh, yes, a sort of a... Uh, no, 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 no. I've got a case. A case of what? Oh, dear, a divorce case. And with father out of town, this is my big opportunity. I'm going to handle it all myself. <laughs> That'll be good. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. Hurry, man. Pack my things. And Mr. Guy's also, sir? Oh, good heavens. What's he got to do with it? Uh, of course. A splendid idea. Guy, you've got to come along, too. Change will do you good. You look a little liverish. It isn't liver, sir. It's love, sir. 
I, I can't leave London. I'm waiting for a telephone call. Guy, you're not pining for that girl. Pining? Men don't pine. Girls pine. Men just suffer. Guy, she hasn't called you in over a fortnight. It's perfectly obvious that she's not interesting. You pulled her gown. <laughs> she pulled your leg. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Of course. You know, Eggy, I never waited two minutes for a girl in my life, and here I've waited two weeks for this one. Uh-huh. Where are we going? To Brighton, a marvelous hotel. The Hotel Mabel, the, the, the Margaret, the Nellie. Oh, confound that woman. Why did she ever come back into my life? Well, it doesn't make any difference. Come along, guy. The change will do you good. Sea air, sunshine, gaiety, girls. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you. Well, I've been looking all over for you. Just dancing. Oh, is that what it was? <laughs> This is a marvelous place, isn't it, Guy? Remind me to come down here the next time I want my constitution undermined. I think it's wonderful. Oh, what is the matter with you? Are you still moping over that same girl? Why, the world's just full of girls. I know, I know, but not like her. She's music. She's the buzzing of the bees in clover. She's the rustle of the leaves in the trees. She's water lapping on the shore. Uh-huh, yes. She sounds like a series of strange noises to me. Well, uh, but cheer up, guy. Cheer up. You may chance across it again sometime. I know I will. And when I do, it won't be chance. Chance is the fool's name for fate. What was that last? Chance is the fool's name for fate. Guy, that's marvelous. Where did you get it? Where did I get it? It's just a line from my last show, that's all. Uh-huh, it's wonderful. Make a good title for a song, don't you think? Chance is the fool's name for fate, my lad. Chance, do you mind if I use it? Come in handy, you know, to shoot into a conversation. Go ahead, spring it on your father. It may encourage him about you. Chance is the fool's name for fate. I'll have to remember that. I love the place. Oh, if Father could only see with what uh, eclat I am upholding the professional dignity of the firm. Guy, I'm going to stay here and wait for my client. Mm. Without me, Egbert, I'm going up to my room. I'll see you later. Uh -huh. Well, I'll be here. <coughs> Pardon, you, uh, you rang, sir? Who, me? Yes. Why, my dear fellow, what is there here to ring with? Pardon, sir, that's just a figure of speech. Oh, oh, uh-huh. Well... <coughs> Bring me, uh, uh, let me have a, uh, there, there, you see, your figure of speech has made me forget entirely what I wanted. Oh. Could it have been that you required crumpets? No, 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 I never ring for crumpets. Would you be the kind of man who'd ring for a toasted scone, sir? Scone? Well, now, uh, no, no, uh, try me again. Well, then, can you, can you imagine yourself with a hankering for a nice gooseberry tart? Oh, what an acid thought, please. No crumpets, no scones, no gooseberry tarts. Well, that lands both of us in a cul-de-sac, then, not it? Of course it does. I knew it would. You know, I hate to leave you like this. You torn with doubts and me with my duty undischarged. Oh, well, cheer up, old man, cheer up. It'll come to me. Was it animal or vegetable, sir? No. Yeah, well, that, that leaves us mineral, do not it, sir? Now, sir, was it a bit of half and half, a noggin of ale, a pipkin of porter, a stoop of stout, or a beaker of beer? Tea. Tea? Well, isn't it a small world, sir? <laughs> hello, Mrs. Glossop. Oh, hello, Mr. Fitzgerald. Well, well, well. <laughs> All ready for graduation day? <laughs> oh, hello, Egbert. Oh, no, it can't. Oh, it is. It's a stowaway. I thought you might forget something, so I came down to help you. Oh, it's so good of you, yes. <laughs> yes. Now, uh, Mrs. Glossop, before you register, I'm very anxious to have just a few last words with you. Last words? Uh, yes, if you don't mind. Right here, would you? Thank you. Now, uh... Oh, wait. Uh, <laughs> oh. Pardon? Yes. Now... I have come to the conclusion that in order to expedite matters, it would be necessary for someone to discover you with someone other than your husband. Just as a matter of form, of course. Oh, Hortense, I don't think I can go through with it. Now, don't be silly. Get it over with. Think of Cyril Gossip. Think hard. <laughs> I knew that would do it. 
Oh, oh, good. Now, the young man is on his way here. You understand, of course, that it wouldn't be technically correct for me to introduce you. Therefore, he will present himself to you. Oh, then we'll need a password. It's too mysterious and wonderful. Well, I have the password. I have it. The young man will say to you, chance is the fool's name for fate. Shakespeare? Yeah. Nothing of the kind. It's a little thing of my own. Chance is the fool's name for fate. Good. That's just it, yes. Now, it will be necessary for you to have a name. A name, of course, yes. So uh, your name will be uh, uh, Mrs. Green. Green? I do adore Green. And you know, the oculus say it's very soothing to the eye. Oh, Egbert, are you coming with us? Why, Hortense? Oh, my, no. You can't remain with her. This is supposed to be a clandestine affair. You can't have a clandestine affair between three people. Oh, that's what you say. <laughs> By, uh, by any chance, are you Mr. Tonetti? Io sono arrivato, io sono pronto. Rodolfo Tonetti at your service. Yes. Well, I am Mr. Fitzgerald. Mr. Fitzgerald? Oh, I am delightful. Oh, I shouldn't doubt it, old man. I shouldn't doubt it. But don't you think that a correspondent ought to come to work quietly? Let's have more repose and less rigoletto. I'm ready for action, and I would do a first-class job. Uh, well, don't be too determined about it. Remember, the lady in question is very sensitive, and you must treat her accordingly. Bene, whichever way the wind she is blowing, that is the way I say it. Yes, well, sit down. Uh, pardon Thank your, you. uh, your, your tea, sir. Oh. Your life, Mr. Tonetti, must be full of excitement. Full of excitement and full of danger. Oh, yes, of course, from the husbands. No, from the ladies. Oh, how interesting. But Tonetti, he know what to do. Yes, so sometimes uh, the lady and I uh, have the conversation. Sometimes I play the uh, concertina. Sometimes I play the solitaire. But mostly, I practice my singing. At home, my wife, uh, he do not like me to sing. Unquestionably a woman of great perspicacity. Oh, si, signore, you bet. You're absolutely sure, Mr. Donetti, that my client will be safe. Oh, signore, with me, strictly business. My slogan, your wife is safe with Tonetti. He prefers spaghetti. Now, listen, I'll give you the password. When you see the lady, you must go to her and say, Chance is the fool's name for fate. Chance is the foolish name for fate. The fool's name for fate. Oh, oh yes. Uh, well, uh, tell me, please, uh, what she mean? Well, you have to have some method. You have to, uh, when you... Uh, who? Oh, never mind. Never mind what it means. Just say it. Yes. And now, Tonetti, remember, I want delicacy, tact, assurance, finesse. I have brought everything. And now, and now, con permiso, I go inside to make the telephone call to tell my wife I am safely arrived. <laughs> Arrivederci. Fate is no fooling. No. Chances are a foolish... Oh, excuse me, please. Taking the name of a foolish... <clears throat> Pardon me. Can I be of service to you? I doubt it. Let me have the menu. I'm waiting for my niece. What have you? Uh, crumpets. Oh, that's too bad, isn't it? Does it run in the family? <laughs> oh, begging your pardon, but that's very whimsical. What? Very whimsical. You know, like, like Sir James Barry. You mean whimsical, don't you? In a manner of speaking, yes, ma'am. Well, why not whimsical, then? Oh, pardon me, but whimsical is much more whimsical than whimsical. <laughs> you know, you're beginning to fascinate me, and I resent that in any man. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Oh, hello, darling. I was just going to order. I really can't eat a thing. But you must eat. After all, you can't have a divorce in an empty stomach. What's the matter? 
You look as though you'd seen your husband. It's Guy Holden, the man I told you about. Good gracious, what have you done? Send out invitations for this affair? Well, I didn't know he was here. Well, he mustn't see me. Mimi! Mimi! I've been chasing after you. You mustn't run like that. Why not? It's bad for my health. What are you doing here? Same as you. What? I came down here looking for pieces of my heart. Oh, no. <laughs> Mimi, you know what I've been doing? Thinking of you, longing for you, waiting to hear from you. I haven't left my telephone. Well, as I remember it, you gave me a London number. Oh, um, well, I, I had to come down here just overnight. A little business. Oh, yes. I saw quite a few of them in bathing suits this afternoon. Oh, no, maybe nothing like that. <laughs> now, why didn't you at least just leave some message for me? I did. You did? But they said that you'd left London. Mimi, you did call. That's wonderful. <laughs> I'd better leave now. Oh, oh, please don't go. It's going to be grand here. They're having a gala night on the Esplanade. It's usually pretty terrible. I know, but just think what it'll mean to miss seeing it. It's worthwhile staying down here just to miss it. <laughs> Please don't ask me to stay. All right, I won't. Don't go. I have so many things to say to you. Like the beat, beat, beat of the tom-tom when the jungle shadows fall. Like the tick, tick, tock of the stately clock as it stands against the wall. Like the drip, drip, drip of the raindrops when the summer shower is through. So a voice within me keeps repeating you, 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 night and day. You are the one, only you, beneath the moon and under the sun. Whether near to me or far, it's no matter, darling, where you are, I think of you, night and day. Day and night, why is it so that this longing for you follows wherever I go? In the roaring traffic's boom, in the silence of my lonely room, I think of you night and day, night and day, under the height of me. There's an oh, such a hungry yearning burning inside of me. And its torment won't be through till you let me spend my life making love to you day and night, night and day.
Cigarette? I uh, still don't know what you're doing down here. I came down with my aunt. <laughs> Isn't that a coincidence? I'm here with my aunt, too. Aunt Egbert. Egbert? Yes, Egbert Fitzgerald. A uh, lawyer, friend of mine. We're down here on a case. <laughs> Aren't you ever going to stop running away from me? <laughs> when two people are destined to come together as we are, there's no use in struggling. <laughs> Do you believe in that kind of destiny? Of course I do. In these things, there's no such thing as, as chance. Chance is the fool's name for fate. You? You? Me? <laughs> well, yes, of course it is. <laughs> So you're the man I've been waiting for. None other. <laughs> I'll be waiting for you in my room, 2.16 at midnight. My dear, it's 12 o'clock. I feel just like New Year's Eve. Good luck to you. Oh, don't leave me. I can't bear to face him. He seems so different. Oh, there's nothing different about any of them except the neckties. <laughs> him, of all people. Well, aren't you even astonished? Me? Astonished? Huh. I haven't been astonished since I was eight. And mind you, I wasn't precocious, just moderately intelligent. I'll give him the most miserable night of his entire business career. A locked door between us. You seem to be going to a lot of trouble for a man you hate. Could anything be more degrading? Well, after all, my dear, a correspondent must be something of an artist. He, he has to have a sense of balance, you know, rather, rather like a mountain goat. <laughs> uh, well, um, I think I'll look up Egbert. The poor darling must be lost without me. Oh, you needn't run away. I knew you were coming here. You knew? Of course. I mean, his aunt. I know, but um, I have relatives myself. Uh, this isn't exactly old home week, is it? Well, nothing is ever done without me. You're not planning to be there? Well, of course not. Oh, just a moment, please. You see, um, I don't know Mimi very well. I wish you'd please tell me something about her. Well, I'll let her tell you. After all, if she has to keep you here, she'll want something to talk about, won't she? Um, keep me here? Well, she has to. Say, which one of us is crazy? Oh, well, it's not me. <laughs> you know, all of this is, is a bit of a shock to me. But your being here is a bit of a shock to Mimi, too. Yes, but it, it, it's Mimi's own doing. Well, I think it's much better to have this settled now, at once. And then the poor girl can start a new life. A, uh, new life? Brand new. She's gonna make a clean sweep of the old. I see. Yes. Yes, and you're the broom. I'll be right out.
I'm sorry I've kept you waiting. Mimi. Mimi, there's something I want to get straight in my mind. Yes? At first you were so shy and, and so reserved. And then this evening you were... Uh... Well, what was I? <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> was I? Yes. But that's not what I'm trying to say. Well, what are you trying to say? Well, I'm trying to describe the shock. You see, uh... <laughs> well, that, that negligee is charming, charming. From Paris, isn't it? You ought to know. You've probably seen plenty of them. Well, a few, of course. <laughs> of course. Oh, but, uh, but never one like that. <laughs> or maybe... Stay where you are. What? Keep away from me. Now, will you please keep your distance, and I'll keep mine. I want you to sit there. What's the matter with it? Now, we're going through with this in a dignified silence. I really prefer it. Warm, isn't it? Do you mind if I recite capitals? What? Capitals of states. North Dakota, Bismarck, Wyoming, Cheyenne, Ohio, Columbus. It's lots of fun. I used to do it as a boy. I don't care what you did as a boy. Well, I did nothing as a girl, so there goes my childhood. <laughs> oh, Mimi. Keep your place. Oh, excuse me one moment, please. Uh, give me a name for a chance, and I'm a fool. Captain! Captain! Uh, maybe I'm a mistake. Oh, Signora. Fate is a foolish thing to take chances with. So are you. Oh, oh scusi. You are not the lady. Stay where you are. Oh, Mimi, I... I mean, say, I, I thought that after the few lovely moments we've had together, that... How can you have the impudence to speak of that now? But I suppose it's just the callousness of your kind. My kind? Ho, ho, don't think you fooled me for a moment. I knew what you were all along. I knew how you made your living. Oh, I'll admit I'm not proud of it, but uh, I hope to do better someday. And in the meantime, it does bring me in a decent income. Hmm. Some people will do anything for money. <laughs> oh, it's not as bad as all that. After all, I do bring pleasure to thousands of people. Thousands? Yes, tens of thousands. I bring romance to tens of thousands of shop girls, servant girls, You might spare me, Mr. Bluebeard. Oh, Mimi, if I would... Are you expecting someone? Well, of course. But not till morning. Who is it? Okay. I better get out of here. <clears throat> I have something very, very important to tell you. Oh, dear, if I only could remember what it was. It was something about that man. What man? Oh, yes. Are you sure you have the right one? Well, he gave me the password. Well, I met a man downstairs, and he said, fate is a foolish thing to take chances with. So I said, so are you. And then he said, you're not the lady. Maybe he said, you're not a lady. I don't know, my darling. I was so upset, I can't be sure. Oh, wouldn't it be too awful if I've made a mistake? Go and ask him. Uh, but I'll have to confess that I, I'm married and, and why I'm here. Well, don't ask him then, but find out everything you can. But until I'm sure, well, how shall I treat him? Oh, I don't know. Be feminine and sweet, if you can blend the two. I really must go and find Egbert again and tell him all about this. You don't think Egbert is hiding from me, do you? Mimi. 
May I run along now? Oh, must you go just yet? Won't you come in and sit down for a while? I didn't do so well in here. <laughs> well, of course, if you'd rather stay out there. Guy, do you think it was fair not to tell me something of your work? Well, I've been trying to forget about it. <laughs> well, uh, how did you get started in your uh, career? Oh, I, I was started by a very well-known actress. Oh. And the thousands and thousands came later. I see. Oh, well, in a way, yes. You see, she encouraged me from my very first step. Very first step? Yes. Dance step. I I'm a dancer by profession. You knew that, of course. Do you mind? Oh, why, no. No, I'm glad. I'm glad. You know, you're the most emotionally unstable girl I've ever met. <laughs> Scusi, lady. I am fate to take foolish chances with. Oh, Matty? Tonetti! I cannot find the lady. I give everywhere the passwords. And everywhere I get these slaps. Well, I don't understand. Oh, by Jove, I forgot to tell you the lady's name. It's Mrs. Green. She's in room 216. Oh, this is in your excuse. Ah, listen. I'm no more prowling around this hotel like a hyena. And be sure the lady doesn't leave her room before morning. Tonetti, he stays do and die until the detective she arrives. That's right. And when the detectives get... Oh, by word. I forgot all about the detectives. Detectives are no detectives. Tonetti, he gets paid. Tonetti, I am here. I, I, I'll rush up to London. Yes, and I'll bring the detectives back the first thing in the morning. Oh, dear. Oh, oh. Egbert! Detective. What? Where were you going? Why, well, I know. I was just thinking because I, I was looking for you. Yes, well, I've been looking for you. I have something very important to tell you. Oh, well, not now. I've got to rush off to London. No, but I must tell you now. Yes? Well, what is it? What is it? What is it? Well, that's just it. I can't remember what it is. Hey, but you're so tempestuous. You drive everything right out of my head. Well, I'm sorry, but I can't wait. Well, uh, then I'll go to London with you. What? And maybe it'll come back to me by the time we get there. Hmm. Besides, you mustn't ride alone at night. I'll let you say that to every man you marry. Oh, wait. Oh, well, come along, dear. Oh, okay. Hey, hey. Aren't the shadows on the sand lovely? Yes, they are lovely. And the light on the water? And the edge of the cloud crossing the moon? Look, it's coming out. Look, Guy, it's coming out. It came out. Oh, isn't it beautiful? It's a honey. I wonder what causes that peculiar effect. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Mimi, who is that man that just went into your room? Man? I, I just saw a weird-looking individual go in there. How many men did you invite here tonight? Oh... Mimi, are you married? What? Is it your husband? Husband? Yes, husband. Oh, oh, scoosie, please, scoosie. Well, what are you doing here? Uh, Chances are that fate is foolish. Oh. Uh, will you please stay here just a minute? It, it, it's no one. No one? Mimi, who is it? What's he doing here? Well, he's... He's here on business. Business? Mm -hmm. Well, let's go back and look at the moon. Not until I throw him out. Oh, no, no, you mustn't. Oh, you can't. Well, then please tell me who he is. Well, he... Uh, 
I am married. You married? To a geologist. Oh, then, uh, then it is your husband. Oh, no, no. You see, I'm not really married. Th that is, I won't be very long. I'm getting a divorce right away, and he's here to help me uh, get it. Wait a minute. Uh, Mimi, are you the woman whose divorce Egbert Fitzgerald is handling? Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. <laughs> and you thought I was your co-respondent. Oh, but now, how could you possibly think a thing like that? Well, you said the right words. What right words? Oh, scoosy, please, scoosy. Fate is the foolish thing. Take a chance. Are you the correspondent? Rodolfo Fortunetti, at your service. You are no longer needed. What? I am taking your place. Are you a union man? Are you hired by Mr. Egbert, too? Oh, oh Mr. Tonetti, you don't understand. This gentleman isn't here to take your place. He isn't going to stay. Ah, then you do need me, signora. Nothing of the kind. You're intruding. Get out of here, will you? But, God... You think I'm going to leave you alone with a strange Italian? He might be a tenor. Si, si, signora. Listen. La donna immobile, ma più del vento. I was wrong. I'm going to throw him out on his ear. Oh, but Guy. But I have a contract, and I sue for the damages. First for my ear, second for my honor, and Quiet, third for me. please, both of you. This is my affair. I'm, I'm here for a divorce, and Mr. Tonetti must stay. Well, if he stays, I stay. I feel crowded, but that's life. Oh, excuse me. At the last my call, she comes. Scusi, please, I answer. Hello? Oh, hello, hello, Maria. Senta, six times I call you and you are boozy. Keeps always booz, 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 booz. Yes, the boozy signal. Oh, Cici, si, si. yes, yes, I'm all right. Uh, no, blonde. Just the blonde. Scusi, signora, but I talked to the wife. She wants to know all about the lady. Yes? Yes, kiss the kiddies for me. <laughs> what? What? Maria. Maria, who is that is speaking to you? What? No, no, davvero non è possibile. What do you think? My little son, Rodolfo, only nine years old, and already his voice is changing. See, si. Oh, ecco, si, si, benissimo. Eh, good night, sweetheart. <laughs> and now, signor, you stay, you do not stay, Tonetti does not care. But no monkey business. And the lady must not leave the room while Tonetti is on the case. You mean we're prisoners? Come now, you don't think I'm going to take the lady away from you? I will see that you do not. Well, that's awfully nice of you. Oh, excuse me, maybe, uh, maybe you'd like to play some 300 bridge? No, thank you. No? Not a bit. Oh, all right, then uh, I go inside and play some solitaire. And please remember not to leave. I watch. Guy, I don't want to drag you into this. Oh, but I want to be in it from now on. <laughs> You know, I don't think it's going to be so bad being kept a prisoner here. <laughs> hello, hello. That doesn't sound like the prisoner's song to me. <laughs> Not a bad tune. What is it? The newest thing over here. It's called the Continental. The Continental? Mm-hmm. Oh. I like it. The second thing I found I'd like to take back home with me. You know the words? Beautiful music. Dangerous rhythm. It's something daring, the continental. A way of dancing that's really ultra new. It's very subtle, the continental. Because it does what you want it to do. has a passion, the Continental. An invitation to moonlight and romance. It's quite the fashion, the Continental. Because you tell of your love while you dance. 
Your lips whisper so tenderly Her eyes answer your song Two bodies swaying the continental And you are saying just what you're dreaming of So keep on dancing the continental For it's a song of romance and love You kiss while you're dancing Not a bad idea <laughs> Continental, mm, it's continental you sing while you're dancing. Your voice is gentle and sentimental. You stroll together arm in arm. You nonchalantly glide along with grace and charm. You will find while you're dancing that there's a rhythm in your heart and soul, a certain rhythm that you can't control. And you will do the continental all the time. Oh, can't we go down there and join the fun? But what if our jailer should catch us? Oh, I forgot all about Scoosie, please. <laughs> what is it? An idea, an idea. Is this one of those? I think I know how we can get out of here without our friend today missing us. This is something I used to do as a boy. I don't care, care what, what you did, did as, as a boy. boy. I know. <laughs> this might work. Though. Look, you've got me cutting out paper dolls. Oh, I see. Well, I'll go change.
The Continental, an invitation to moonlight and romance. It's quite the fashion, the Continental, because you tell of your love while you dance. Your lips whisper so tenderly, her eyes answer your song. To body sway, the Continental, and you were saying just what you're thinking of. So keep on dancing, the Continental, for it's the song of romance and of love. You're a dancing continental, continental. You sing while you're a dancing. Your voice is gentle, so sentimental. You know before the dance is through that you're in love with she and she's in love with you. You'll find while you're a dancing. There's a rhythm in your heart and soul. There's a rhythm that you can't control. You do the continental all the time. you 
Jews have found the key to Continental. It's like a fever. It's like a plague. It's the West Coast Europe. From Mars. Rhythm in your heart and soul, a certain rhythm that you can't control the continent. 
Now, why did you do this? I wanted to be sure of you. Oh, senor. Who is this? How do I know? This isn't my racket. You've been through these things before. Oh, I know, but you upset my entire routine. Find out who it is. Who is it? It's the waiter, sir. It's the waiter. Ask him what he wants. What do you want? Breakfast, sir. Breakfast? What shall we do? Give him his breakfast. No, wait a minute. Oh, Mimi. Oh, Mimi. Yes? Uh, there's a waiter out here who says he wants breakfast. What? Well, that's what he says. The poor fellow may be hungry. Clown, that's our breakfast. I just ordered it. That's our breakfast, Annette. Billy, I open. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. You rest comfortably? Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> Put that right here. Yes. May I... Uh... Mr. Tinetti, you sit there. And Guy, you sit there. <laughs> you know, I'd like to have breakfast with you every morning. Yes, thank you. I hope you like what I ordered. You know, I've never had breakfast with two gentlemen before. <laughs> I've tried it. It's no fun. Now, now, when the detectives arrive, we must be very careful. Oh, I hope they don't arrive too soon. I've grown to like both of you tremendously. Oh, this is so sweet. Oh, oh Guy, Guy, you'd better hide. Yeah, let Tanetti hide. She's right. You ruin all. Go. Oh, Guy, please. You want me to be free, don't you? All right, I'll hide, but please oh. call if you need me. Yes, yes. yes. No, no, not over here. Where? Over there, anywhere. Oh, Just stay. Coffee, ma'am. I thought it best to keep it up for you. Guy. Yes, dear. It's all right. It's just the waiter with the coffee. Listen, waiter. The next time you knock, let's have some sort of a signal like this, will you? I can't be dashing in and out of here, coffee or no coffee. Oh, I see. A little knock each time, huh? Yeah, yeah, yes, Tell me, the gentleman in this case is a scientist, uh, is he not? A very distinguished scientist in his own field. A fossil among fossils, a geologist. Oh, pardon, sir. Will you discuss in geology? Uh oh, he's in again. If you'll excuse me, sir, I, I have an unnatural passion for rocks. Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, no, sir. It's a wonderful thing, geology, sir. Do you know, sir, geologically speaking, this little island of Great Britain is 500 million and three and one half years old. How do you know it's exactly that old? Well, Professor Brown told me it was 500 million years old when I first met him, and that was, that was three and a half years ago. Hmm. Who's that? Professor Brown. Professor Brown. Uh, yes, he's a geologist. Yeah. Him and his wife stopped at the last place I worked. Hmm. Do you know, sir, it was Professor Brown who told me that this sea coast round here is really a, an igneous intrusion? You know, you're somewhat of an igneous intrusion yourself. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. Not to return to the facts, we... Is that the way you want me to knock, sir? Uh, yes, thank you, thank yes, you. Thank you. Yeah, I see, thank you very much. Oh, what a day this is going to be. Well, Mrs. Glossop. Hello, Egbert. Uh, quiet, please. Oh, Guy. Uh, what are you doing here? Oh, Egbert, that's what I've been trying to remember to tell you about. Oh, was it? Yes. This is my Mimi. Oh, really? Uh-huh, yes. Well, this is my finish. Tonetti, if you have bungled this job... Oh, now, scusi, signor. Please, scusi. Uh, guy, you've got to get out of here. You're just messing up the whole thing. You have brought the detectives. Better. Better than that. Oh, I've pulled a supreme coup. A masterpiece. I bet this will be good. I have brought Mr. Glossop. My husband? Yes, the husband. The husband is coming. Hooray, hooray. Shut up, Guy. Husband. Shut up. Here, you've got to get out of here. No more hiding. Oh, please, Guy, you promise. All right, I'll hide. But please call if you need me. Call anyhow. Uh, yes, I will. Mimi, it was my idea to have your husband here. Wasn't it clever of me? Oh, Hortense, why did you do that? Something terrible is liable to happen. Courage, courage. I don't think you'll shoot. Shoot? Is someone going to shoot? Oh, let's wait for the shooting. Shoot? 
Mr. Egbert, never. Never have I had to come in contact with the husband before, and I don't think it is fair of you to ask me to do so now. Look, look, where are the detectives? I demand the detectives, the team I can't try. Oh, I'm sorry, old man. I can't do anything about that now. He's probably on his way up here. <laughs> do something, do something. Look amorous. Look amorous. Sonetti, look amorous. Yeah. Hortense, look. Never mind. Come on. Come yes, on. Egbert. Well, this is too much for Sonetti. Oh, quick, quick, quick. What shall we do? Well, well, Mr. Egbert said try to look amorous, see, like this. Oh, you just look sick. Oh. Well, let's try this. Come in. Pardon, madam. I hope I'm up the right way. Now you've spoiled everything. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I, I came for the dishes. Oh, well, well the dishes can wait. Uh, can't we do something with him? Uh, yes, here. Uh, go quickly there, please. Yes, hide him. Uh, in the, the, the bedroom? Yes, yes, hurry, hurry. Yes, yes, hurry, hurry. Oh, no, sir. Please. Hi, not. waiter. Oh, how do you do, sir? You're uh, hiding, too? <laughs> yes, sir. They just shoved me in here, you know. No, it's more. Hey, Come in. Who is this fellow? Uh, this is my husband. Oh, how do you do? I'm so very pleased. You haven't answered my question. I must confess, he's my... This object? <laughs> no, I don't believe it. My dear child, he's nothing to you. He has all the earmarks of a hired co-respondent. That is not true. She loved me, and I love she. <laughs> Mimi, you amuse me. I'd never believe it with him. This, <laughs> this hairdresser. Guy! Guy! Yeah. I'm sorry to ask you to do this, but will you kiss me? I'm not sorry. Bravo, bravissimo! <laughs> and who, pray, is this new Lothario? After the divorce, we're going to be married. What divorce? Why, aren't you going to divorce me? Why, no, my dear. I'm going to forgive you. Forgive her, capista di brutti cara. Enough of this nonsense. Now, Mimi, you pack up your things and come home at once. At once, I tell you. Why, you're just a little lamb who has strayed. And you, sir, are just an ineffectual little puppy. At last, I got my chance to throw somebody out. Oh, no, no, <laughs> Guy. Oh, no, you mustn't, please. Pardon me, ma'am. May, may I go now? I got my work to do. Oh, yes, yes. Go ahead. Why, how do you do, Professor Brown? Professor Brown? Well, how are you, Professor, if you don't mind my asking? Oh, is this your dear old friend, the rock thrower? Yes, sir, that's him. That's ridiculous. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I never saw this man in my life. Oh, come, Professor. Don't you remember all those cheery little chats we used to have about rocks? You and me and, and your wife? No, I do not. And uh, would you know the Professor's wife if you saw her? Why, of course I would, sir. Mm-hmm. Am uh, I Mrs. Brown? No, ma'am. You're Mrs. Green. Well, strike me pink. You see, ma'am, Mrs. Brown, she, she was French. She couldn't speak a word of English. Why, Buster Brown. This is most unfossilish of you, sir. I've got to catch a train. Let me pass, sir. I will not, sir. Let me pass, I say. Never, sir. Well, well, what happened? Did it work? Did it work? Meet the future Mrs. Holden. Oh, no. oh, I told you, I told you. Yeah, Father will be so proud of me. Egbert and I are going to be married, too. Uh, yes. <laughs> why, darling, why, what's the matter? We were married last night on our way back from London. Last night, were we? Why, of course, so we were. Darling, I'd forgotten about it. Isn't it wonderful? I tell you what we'll do. We'll all hurry back to London and have a big celebration. Oh, scusi, scusi. I'm also very good at parties. Oh. 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 